All around the world, USAGM journalists face threats, harassment, and intimidation in an effort to prevent them from reporting the truth. Trung Doi Nat, an imprisoned RFA Vietnamese service blogger, was listed as one of the most urgent press freedom cases in the world, according to One Free Press Coalition, a global press freedom initiative in which all USAGM networks participate. Not was forcibly disappeared in January 2019 in Bangkok, Thailand, where he had applied for refugee status. In March, RFA learned he had been jailed without charge in Hanoi. Not is one of three journalists working for USAGM-supported networks being held in Vietnam. Nguyen Van Hoa, a citizen journalist who worked with RFA's Vietnamese service, is serving a seven-year sentence for his reporting that was critical of the government. He has been beaten and harassed in prison. Lu An Hung, a blogger and political contributor to VOA's Vietnamese service, was arrested in July 2018 and is being held in prison while he awaits trial on charges of, quote, abusing democratic freedoms. If convicted, he could face seven years. The Phnom Penh Municipal Court has postponed a verdict in the trial of former RFA Khmer service journalists Wan Chin and Yuang Sutherin. The two were arrested on wholly unsubstantiated espionage charges in the wake of RFA being forced to close its Phnom Penh bureau in the fall of 2017. <laughs> Human Rights Watch, Reporters Without Borders, UNHCR, and 25 members of Congress have joined RFA and USAGM in calling for the charges to be dropped. Iraq's media regulator, the Communications and Media Committee, suspended the broadcasting license and activities of Al Hora Television after an August 31st investigative report uncovered alleged corruption within the Sunni and Shiite Muslim endowments linked to senior religious authorities in Iraq. The report also implies ties between these state bodies and armed groups. The broadcasting suspension will last three months but the media regulator said Alhora's activities are suspended until it corrects its position and broadcasts an official apology for tarnishing the reputation of Iraqi religious institutions and figures. Alhora Television stands by its reporting. In June, VOA Zimbabwe service Nunurai Jenna was detained after taking photograph at a police roadblock. He was released after three hours without charge. VOA South Sudan stringer Viola Elias was detained by security officers after interviewing children shining shoes near a customs market for a story on child labor. Security officers released her after several hours, but kept her recorder. On June 9th, Kazakh authorities detained two RFERL journalists and refused accreditation to seven more during a tightly controlled snap election intended to name a successor to former President Nazarbayev, who resigned in March. On July 6th, men in black masks appearing to be security agents tried to block RFERL Kazakh service reporters from filming the detention of protesters. The aggressors attacked RFERL reporter Orkin Bisanov and cameraman Yurzan Amirkanov with gas spray, broke a camera tripod and lights, and used umbrellas to block their views. Police were on the scene, but did not intervene despite the RFERL personnel asking for help. And on July 22nd, RFERL reporters and other journalists were covering a press conference when an unknown group of women attacked them. Several women attacked RFERL reporter Nurjal Topayeva and cameraman Tokmolda Kusainov, damaging the video camera. In a brazen example of the government's efforts to control independent press, Tajikistan's Ministry of Foreign Affairs has revoked the accreditation of RFERL video journalist Baratali Nazarov for his reporting. 
In August, during a press conference in Dushanbe, the foreign minister remarked, We will never close Radio Ozodi here, but we will probably not register those employees of Radio Ozodi who let, in their articles, even the smallest damage of current state policy. On August 19th, the Russian Duma announced a commission to investigate, quote, foreign meddling in the internal affairs of Russia following recent mass protests in Moscow over the forthcoming city council elections. The Duma said the commission will summon foreign journalists for questioning, including those from media affiliated with the State Department and USA Funds. RFERL videos of the protests have garnered millions of views on social media. The federal news agency, sponsored by Russian billionaire and so-called Putin's chef Yevgeny Prigozhin, has published a media classifier that considers current time, the Russian services of RFERL and VOA, RFERL's Tatar Bashkir service, North Caucasus service, and four of RFERL's Russian regional news sites as foreign media publishing anti-Russian content. Recently, Tatar Bashkir service journalists were refused accreditation to cover the United Russia Party primaries in Tartarstan, even though all necessary documentation had been provided. At the same time, Russia's federal government, formed by the same United Russia Party and led by the head of that party, has for years refused to register RFERL to work legally on Russian territory. USAGM and RFERL urged the release of Stanislav Aseyev and Ole Halaziuk, two RFERL Ukrainian service contributors being held by Russia-backed separatists in Donetsk. Both men were taken separately and are held incommunicado. For more information, please visit usagm.gov.